And we're good to go. Okay, Monica. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I'm glad you're here. So Monica, I've asked you here today to talk to us as, as a group. We're all digital agency owners, creatives. We do a lot of work on our own self images and we do a lot of work for our clients. And when you and I spoke, I guess last week, all of a sudden I just realized, oh my gosh, this, this is one of those experts that I got to have in our group really speaking to our audience to help us understand how we can take images of ourselves or of our clients and encourage our people and ourselves to actually grow as people to understand who we are and that that process that you take clients through, you can take us through. I want you to walk us through today. But first of all, before we uncover all that, tell me about you. Tell us about you, where you live, what you do, how awesome you are, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I don't know about how awesome, but I will just tell you, I'm a photographer and I kind of stumbled into it years and years ago. And I think what I've learned in photography is that it's, I'm not taking a picture of two eyes, a nose and a mouth. Mm -hmm. What I found in clients is that they would walk out of the studio, seeing themselves in a whole new light and being inspired and getting excited and all of a sudden leaving with this great sense of confidence about mm -hmm. themselves. And I find, you know, it lingers on after the photo shoot. So as much as I have a studio in New York, L.A., San Diego, and it's grown, it's wonderful. The thing that remains constant that I love is that these photographs seem to transform people, not just with a makeover, but with like an inner self-confidence to feel like they can take anything on. It renews their websites, it allows them to be able to connect with people on a professional level for dating. <laughs> it's been a kind of a neat side thing. People add a couple of professional photos, not too stiff, just naturally them. Sometimes it takes somebody, you know, to make you comfortable and all of a sudden their photos beam and they get like an influx of great dating options, you know, for a lot of people, they come in. They do business headshots, you know, and all of a sudden people on LinkedIn want to connect with them, you know, things that didn't happen before on a personal mm -hmm. level. I have a lot of teens who it's a tough time being a teen these days on social media. And all of a sudden they feel a beam of confidence. You know, moms come in and do it after their teens and they all of a sudden felt like wow, like I haven't been the center of attention. I haven't felt like a woman in so long. I just feel like mom in a ponytail and sweatpants and sweatshirt. And all of a sudden they feel like renewed and alive. And uh, I guess that's what I love about doing what I do. Well, you're obviously really freaking good at it. I've, I've seen so many people who are following you and so many of the cool, amazing people you get to work with in this process. So first up, Jody. hey, awesome to see you. Jody's amazing as an agency owner. Remo, great to see you. CN, always good to see you. Everybody else, a uh, bunch of folks watching, jumping in. Thank you all for hanging out. As always, Lucy, great to see you. As always, ask your questions. We're, we're live here. This is meant to be interactive, live Q&A as we do every, every time we do this three times a week. So Monica, help us understand, first of all, when we're going into the photo shoot space for ourselves, or I think a lot of folks are going to watch this and think, how can I get my clients in front of someone like you or like you? you in particular, what are you after in a photo shoot that really helps us express uh, knowing who we are, but also expressing who we are? Um, I think I'm a little bit different because I'm not what they call a shoot and burn photographer. I'm not someone you show up with whatever you bring and I give you an hour and click away and you get what you get. I always tell my clients, the photo shoot starts way before you walk into my studio. I always have a pre-consult call with my clients one or two of them we talk about what's your style what's your personality if we're doing branding photo tell me what's your visual message what's your voice you know give me five adjectives that describe you i want to get to know someone before they even step foot in here then we work on wardrobe choosing the right wardrobe and a lot of people are like i don't know what my style is and so i give them some inspiration photos and things to think about you know what stores do you shop at maybe you want to go outside of your box a little bit what does your brand say and they may not represent their brand and what they wear normally so it becomes a little bit of a transformation they learn a lot about themselves like oh yeah you know this kind of outfit would really represent my brand much better so you know i, I go through all that we go through prep tips beauty tips you know, you know how to take care of what's the best nails, colors, hair, guys, grooming, stuff like that. So then when they walk in, they already have a sense of confidence.
needs. You know, they know what to expect. They've already connected with me. There's a comfort level. And honestly, the photo shoot, I always tell everyone, don't worry about it. I've got the lighting. I've got the angles. I know the posing from working with so many models and stuff. So they start to relax. And as soon as you relax, you become your most beautiful natural self. And there's nothing more beautiful than a natural smile, a natural expression. And that just kind of unfolds. And the photo shoot is not about being a model. It's not about looking perfect or skinniest or tallest. It's about being the most beautiful natural sense of you. And that's what people connect with. So photo shoots just kind of fun, to be honest. I, I, I like personally can feel what you're saying right now. Like it's so hard. Uh, Brennan, by the way, great to see you as well. Um, Brennan just says, love the fact that you have a consultation before shooting images. Brilliant. Absolutely. It's the, the way you're expressing this, like I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling comfortable in my own skin. And that's, that's really hard. Like, even if we're just doing a simple selfie for our Instagram post over the weekend, that's just going to go away in 30 seconds. We still, I mean, how does we take a dozen of the stinking selfies <laughs> in the same background? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I think my hair is a little bit, I got to do it again. You go back, you walk half a mile back to that yeah. spot on your hike and you do it. Just showing up as you is such an important message. That really is. I hmm. love to hear from a guy and hear that guys go through the same thing as women do when it comes to selfies. <laughs> <laughs> we might not want to admit it, but it's true. We do the same thing. I, I have uh, five teenagers and they're <laughs> guys and girls, two guys, three girls, and we're all the same. I mean, and unfortunately, as a 43-year-old man, I'm still just as insecure as my teenagers are. You think I'd be oh, over you know it. I'm sure you get a, a pile of advice from your kids. No, dad, stand this way. Stand this way. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're embarrassed about my Instagram account. So <laughs> when, when we're working with our clients, so everybody in this group is constantly helping their clients. We're telling our story. We're also telling our client's story to the people that they influence. When we're working with our clients and helping them pick that ideal photographer to really capture the essence of who they are, who their brand is, all that kind of stuff. How do we pick the right photographer to get headshots? Some, some, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, like a B real shot where it's kind of casual that we can scatter on websites, landing pages, all that stuff. How do we pick the right photographer? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, photography is an art. So it's not like going to Target and comparing one product to another. So I'd say go to their website, check out their photos. Does their style, their artistic style connect with you? Are you drawn to that? And then don't be afraid to pick up the phone. These days, none of us pick up the phone. We just text. You know, we almost avoid it when our phone rings. Pick up the phone and talk to them. See if you connect with them. Because if you have a comfort level with them, and when they speak to you, if it sounds like they understand what you're looking for and what you're about and how to bring you out, like I always give my clients a suggestion, you know, like I, I listen to them tell me, you know, what their concerns are, what they're aiming for. Um, and then I try to bring it together for them. And if you feel like that photographer gets you and you have a comfort level with them, you're just going to be the most natural and beautiful on camera. So I always mm. say connect with the artistic style on their website and then try to connect with them personally. And the decision will really speak for itself then for you. That's really helpful. That's really helpful because I'm, I mean, we're all marketers so at some level. So I'm skeptical. Anytime I see somebody's site, I'm always thinking, is it is that really who they are? But that's a good point. If it's, if it's the way they're presenting their brand, their image on screen, then I'm probably going to, and I'm connecting, then, and then I'm probably going to connect to that real person too. And that, calling them on the phone, what a weird idea. But what I a know, good right? idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yes, Tracy, I have five teenagers. And Tracy then asked, uh, how can we help our clients be more comfortable uh, as the face of their brand? How can we help them really be and own that space as the face of their brand? Some, some clients are really shy that way, right? So I actually go through some personal branding with my branding clients. Um, I'll take them through, not all of them, um, but I have a personal small little branding consultation. And if they're not sure of their brand, if they seem like they're all over with it, I sit down with them and I have them tell me five adjectives that would describe your brand. It starts about, I kind of do a small mini marketing plan with them, a business plan. You know, give me one sentence that, you know, would represent your brand, you know, and then tell me who are your icons in this industry? 
You know, what do you like about those icons? What do you connect with? What are your goals? What do you hope for? You know, what are you trying to achieve? Who do you want to connect with? Who's your audience? What are they like? What are they interested in? Why would they want to connect with you? I go through these sort of questions to help them kind of round out what their brand is about before we photograph, because I don't want to photograph a random bunch of pictures because it's not going to make any sense. Your words have to have a cohesion and your visual message has to have a synergy that's cohesive with your, your, your word of message to them too. Mm -hmm. So everything's got to work together. So I do kind of a pre-branding console for people who need that. Other people are very definitive in their brand. It's already grown, it's already established. They just need to update their website. So I'll take a look at their old website and I'll ask them for other websites of industry leaders that they really like how their website's been done or how their branding's been done and ask them, you know, what do you identify with the most? What grabs you about that? And I'm going to try to capture that for them in their own personal life. Mm. Yeah, good one. Okay, then uh, Tracy follows up with that. Uh, yes, often they say, oh, people don't want to see me. But when we use photos and videos from them in ads, many times they perform the best. That is absolutely true. And, and I don't know, Monica, if you've experienced this, but sometimes for the brands we help the, and I'm not a photographer, we, we find amazing people like you to get that stuff done. Cause this is the, this is the coolest camera I have right here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the only camera actually. Um, so the, uh, but, but the people who are kind of even sometimes awkward in, in representing the brand often, interestingly, that connects even more in an ad. It's, it's just people real. Like real. Yeah. I don't want you to be, you know, it was different. I started in the ad agencies and I worked for the number one, two, and three agencies in the world on these hundred million dollar accounts. It huh. used to be more stage, there's more production value. Now you are your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, people want real, they want to connect with people. Mm -hmm. They don't just want to connect with Shaquille O'Neal, you know, an icon brand. Yeah, they're great. But these days, brandings are so big. There's so many smaller entrepreneurs, so many smaller businesses that are coming out. And you are your brand. People want to know you. They want to see you. And they're not worried about, oh, is your hair too, you know, is it not, you know, blonde enough, trendy enough? No, they want to hear from you. They want to connect with the inside of you. Mm. Yeah, that's what I agree with you. I think that's what sells these days is that connection. Is there a place, uh, this is a question we get frequently, it didn't pop up right here, but I'm sure people are thinking it. Is there a, a place, a setting, um, like indoor, outdoor, at the person's brand, with their logo behind them, wearing their brand t-shirt, is that kind of stuff cool, or should we just let the person show up as who they are as a real person, and then connect the brand and the messaging around the photo? Does that make sense? Um. I think I hear what you're saying. Like I mean, people often try to layer the photo itself with like the image itself has so much like, like if I had elite agency back here on the wall and I was wearing an elite agency hat and elite agency shirt and, you know, is that cool? Or should we just be like, here's me and I'm a real person that happens to do this for a living. I think it kind of depends on what you're doing, what your industry is. Um, hmm. You know, as a doctor, you don't need to, you know, write down the name of your hospital and your, your shirt, you know, but if you are a representation for, you know, Nike or something, you do need to represent the brand. Um, I wouldn't go overboard with it. You can even have a simple logo on it and stuff. Everything I do is very specific to what that client's industry is, what their persona is, what their comfort mm -hmm. level is. There isn't necessarily one particular right and wrong because we are not a streamlined business anymore. We are all individual characters and our business are individual characters and you need to speak to that huh. i do say to people though you know i have them bring usually three outfits and i want something you know that might be casual then something more formal something that's distinctly you then i want to go a little to the right and a little to the left so interesting you know, we're all i feel like we all have so much in our personalities we're not just one look not just one style not just one persona so let's get wardrobe that captures a little bit of the different sides of us so you can appeal to a broader market, a broader spectrum of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> true story. Um, someone helping me with my branding recently said, Chris, you need to get some new pictures done. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Fly out to San Diego and make a weekend of it, right? There you go. 
<laughs> we do have SeaWorld here and Disneyland. I'm just saying. <laughs> we spent, um, people in my group know this, Monica, you might not. We, I, I work less than 30 minutes a day. That's why people in this group figure out how to run their agencies really efficiently. Incredible. Efficiently. So we spent uh, five or six weeks, a few years ago, our very, few, uh, six years ago, our very first long vacation was working from Northern California down to Southern California. It took six weeks just to travel the coast. And so we spent a full week actually in San Diego because we just, we learned, we taught our kids to surf there and we did the sea, we did everything. It's such a cool community. The boardwalk there. Oh, if anybody hasn't been there, you got to look Monica up and go just say hi to her. Get pictures too, obviously, but it's just a cool town. It's it is. You know what? I actually do a lot of destination shoots. So funny thing, it's because New York is such a great destination. I have clients that fly in from Paris, from Bordeaux, from Florida, Michigan, and they come in now to San Diego and to New York and they make a weekend of it because it is, it is a great place to come and visit. New York's got a lively energy about it. San Diego, we've got so much going on here too. How fun. I have women who come out as girlfriends weekends. It is. It's a great place. It's a great place. <laughs> That's really a fun idea. I can see a lot how you took six weeks from Northern California to Southern. Oh my gosh, yes. It just got warmer and warmer and more and more tanned. It was, it was the, You're I wouldn't want to go the other way because it get colder and colder <laughs> <laughs> and rainier and rainier. So, all right. So I need to get real, real deal, you know, better pictures done. I haven't done that in a while. The last ones were probably taken with an iPhone of some sort. Um, <laughs> so I'm embarrassed to even say that to you. So the, <laughs> the, what do I like? What would I do next if I was going to engage you? Like, since you're the like the best, and your experience that you put together the best, what would that look like as a as a form of comparison? So as I talk to other photographers, I know like Monica versus somebody else. Yeah, Monica. Like, how do you do this whole thing? Well, I won't say it's Monica. I don't like. Oh, by the way, real quick, real quick, Monica. Jody says, "Whoa, San Diego, are you still doing shoots with COVID?" That's a good question. So yeah, it's definitely tricky out here. So I wear a mask in all of my photo shoots. Um, New York as well too. The studios are allowed to be open there, um, but I wear a N N95 mask, which is really thick. It does make it kind of difficult for speaking and directing, you know, and just helping them with their posing and stuff like that. Um, my client will oftentimes wear a mask as they come in. Everything is sanitized before every shoot, between every shoot. We don't do the wardrobe, unfortunately, at this time. I have a huge studio wardrobe. That's not available. So there are certain things that aren't possible. Um, but otherwise, yeah, especially headshots and stuff like that, we do six feet of distancing. The one thing with photography is we have long lenses, so it's kind of nice. We need to have the distance anyway to capture that great photo, but yeah. It's just most mostly with the mask, everything sanitized, a few restrictions at this point in terms of not being able to use wardrobe and yeah. certain places we can't go, et cetera, et cetera. But Jody you says, to work around things. You guys are all business owners, so you know that we've all had to juggle. We're and, figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in a face that a lot of us are just to the screen. You're actually face to face with people. Jody's in uh, Teme Temecula. Is that how you say okay. it? Yeah, not too far. Yeah, she's not far. Jody's one of our, we have a collection of rock star agencies in our programs. And Jody is one that we would recommend to anybody just from a Facebook ad running standpoint, all that stuff. Jody is crushing it. A women led business. She serves women population who serve other women. She's like, her branding is so on point. Who she is as a human is on point. Like it's awesome. Jody, I'm, you know, you weren't expecting me to brag on you, but I'm, it's privileged to have you in our group. I so you, Jody, you sound like a great woman. She's you amazing. Yeah, she's got the luckiest kids in the world. Um, all right, so back to just if, if we're working with you, like what does that experience look like? Like the way you do this is fascinating to me because you're just the coolest ever. So I call you and say, Annika, my pictures are crap. I used an iPhone. What do you do next? Um, that's usually how it starts or people say, I'm terrible from the camera, but I've got to do this. I've been wanting to do it forever, but I'm horrible. I look horrible at every picture. That's pretty much at every conversation. <laughs> and I always start by telling them, you know what? Relax. I got you. Don't worry about it. Now tell me about yourself. Why do you want to do this? Is this for professional, personal? If it's for personal, a lot of people are like, I don't know. I, I just, 
I see the photos you do and I want something like that for myself. I've always wanted to do this. I have some people say, you know what, I'm just looking for a new experience, you know, mm -hmm. something to do with my daughter or my mom, you know, it's her birthday and this seemed like fun and we've done the spa, we've done our nails, we've done all that stuff. This just seemed like, tell me about it. So I'll tell them about the experience, you know, and have them tell me about you. I don't really have a standard script, I guess, Chris. I just kind of like you just talk to you and you learn about each other. And mm -hmm. as you learn about each other, I think it just kind of comes together, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then if I, when we come to San Diego, which we'll be surfing when we do, oh, by the way, Jody and oh, sorry, Jody and Monica, you guys need to talk. Monica, Jody's uh, Jody says, totally need new photos, right? Jody, I feel that way too. I feel that way every time I get photos done, though. Um, but you know <laughs> so what? what I is, think the big thing when you're like? done with photos is that when, because I've had my photo taken by so many people, and mm -hmm. some people I'm like, oh my God, out of a thousand shots, couldn't get one good one. And other people, I'm like amazed. I'm like, wow, that is a cool angle. That's just a cool shot. How did you do that? That's you know, I think you have to trust your photographer because photography is a lot about angles. It's a lot about lighting. I have people pose in ways that are make them feel a little uncomfortable, arching their back, not like a model, but even pulling them away from the wall, creating those negative spaces, working with hands so they're gentle and soft rather than stiff and and it's just little nuances. When you have a professional photographer, they should guide you and direct you in your posing. I don't want them to pose you like a statue so you're stiff, but they want to help them relax and understand that you have joints all the way down to your little fingertips, you know? Yeah. And then if you're shorter, you're going to want to pull a, away a little bit in your po posture. You're not going to want to be tight and closed. So, so I'll have some women who will say, I want to do this shot. I'm like, I look at that, I'm like, that's great, but she's probably 5'10 and 98 pounds. It's not for everybody. I might have other women who show me a picture, you know, and it's like, blah, 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 boom, kind of Kardashian. But you have to go with, you know, your best assets. It's not that you're better or worse or they're better or worse, but if you can bring that out and I teach you how to pose, how to work your body, see the angles, understanding lighting a little bit, um, a professional photographer makes a difference in that point. I know what angles to capture you at. A little higher, a little lower makes a big difference. Putting lighting to kind of balance out outdoor lighting from one side and balancing it out with lighting that's superficial on another. These are the things that you hire a photographer for. We also have lighting that's much stronger. So for most people, it literally washes away wrinkles. It's mm. some of these lights are magic. I don't have to do any retouching because the sheer amount of lights that I can use on you washes away all blemishes. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I want to take those lights with me everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jody says Chris needs to come to San Diego to get shots, paddleboarding, hiking, et cetera. Yes, that would be that'd be fun. My my real life is spent typically outside of my kids playing and doing adventures. And so that's if you're gonna photograph me, that's that would work. That's a good point. So this is really cool. All right, last call for questions. If we're, we're about to wrap this up in a couple minutes, so anybody got any questions? Fire away at Monica while you got her. Um, Monica, how can we reach out to you? What's the best way for us to engage with you? Follow your brand. I mean, the stuff you've got online. Just you're, you're just a fascinating person to follow. Anyway, what's the way to get there? Um, so I would say my website. Uh, it's insidethestylestudio.com. Uh, Instagram, connect with me there. I have a nice audience who is really engaging. So Instagram, I'm inside the style studio with Monica Han Photography. As I think I mentioned to you before, Chris, um, I rebranded. We were just Monica Han Photography, but I've got a staff of seven hair and makeup artists. I work, work with wardrobe stylists. I work with such a large team of people that I decided to make it something more all encompassing. So now it's inside the style studio. It's about photography. It's about wardrobe. It's about image makeovers. It's about a sense of self-confidence. It's kind of an all encompassing, look good, feel good. How do you bring mm -hmm. that up? So inside the style studio.com. I'll drop the links here and obviously people will jump in there and, and follow along and engage with you. Uh, it sounds like you and Jody need to talk for sure. And um, I, my last question, if I get anybody else, if you have one fire away, we're about to wrap it up. My last question is, and I've always wanted this, I know you've been in modeling for years and you work with models for years. You work so many cool spaces. Do do professional models feel like me? Like, do they, are they insecure about 
themselves too or are they like just constantly like knowing they've got it because it just feels yeah, interesting human. modeling is such an interesting field it's one thing you never thought of it's a very lonely field really the so models travel all over the world i'm talking about more top tier professional models they travel from job to job state to state all over the world and you never photograph the same you rarely photograph the same photographer because you're on different jobs and they have you know different brands hire different photographers you're working with other models you know so i think there's a lot of models struggle, you know, I, you know, they're beautiful, but at the same time, you know, their eating regimen, workout regimen is really difficult. And a lot of things they have to do on their own. A lot of them, because they travel so much, they have to work out on their own and stuff like that. It's a little bit of a lonely feel, field. Um, and it's a tough field. You know, you can make a lot of money in it, but you got to be ready for a lot of rejection. So these women, you know, on the outside seem perfect, you know, I've even had a lot of teenagers, they walk in and they look like the perfect prom queen. You know, they look like the iconic all Americana. And I'm really surprised, a little sad to hear that social media, even these girls who are really popular in school, it is withered away at their confidence, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think the photos have been an amazing tool with a side effect that all of a sudden lets people see how beautiful they are how great they can be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, even models too, they need encouragement. It's not easy to be a model. I have a lot of aspiring models, new models. And I think a lot of people think, the first thing I'll tell them is, just because you're a beautiful face doesn't mean you can be a model. A lot of people are like, this is my best selfie pose. And they have the same look, you know, and all their selfies. But being a model means you have to come up with the top models can do a hundred poses in one hour. That's a lot of different looks and poses. Holy cow. Yeah, you need to be good on all levels. A good model understands lighting, understands how to work with a photographer. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. I think I lost you on the question there. I just got into Oh no, you're oh, you're well, right. I, I guess yeah, that's that's more insight than I was thinking. Um that's really true though. And it, and it's sad um that we're all we're all kind of wired to be insecure and social media it's just, it sucks the life out of us sometimes. Sometimes it can really build us up and help us, but it does. You know, yeah, it's, it's the real It's nice deal. to know though, everybody is still a person, the most beautiful model in the world. She has her own insecurities, you know, mm -hmm. all of us do as powerful or as great as certain people look on TV or on, you know, Instagram. We're all just people when it comes down to it, right, Chris? That's so true. And 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 last thing I want to say here, Monica, is I mean this truly from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for helping us and your clients, but even us today, pull our best selves out and be confident with who we are, just like we are right now. Because yeah, I need to hear that message. And we all do. We need to hear it over and over and over. And we need to remind ourselves and write on our mirror that we are we are enough, we are special, we're awesome, and we have so much to bring to the world right now. Thank you, Chris, for having me. You are an inspirational person, you know, five kids working 30 minutes a day, bringing everyone together, connecting the world, such a positive spirit. I mean, literally it's contagious. So thank you. I love what you're doing. I love this page and I really look forward to meeting more people on the inner circle. We're glad to have you in our community, Monica. You're the best. All right, talk soon. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. As always, as I say on our Thursday calls, don't work this weekend if you can help it. Put everything down. Monica and I were talking right before we jumped on this call. And she's one of those cool people who's not constantly on her laptop working. She's like, no, I'm on my phone. Let's do this. I'm, I'm like, going snorkeling this weekend. Look at that. It's so refreshing. <laughs> what a great example. Enjoy your life. Friday, Saturday, Sundays are made to chill. So get out there and relax and have fun like Monica. <laughs> All right. See everybody. Have a fantastic Thanks, everyone. Day. Bye, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye.